All right, everybody, welcome back to the Scoring Notes website and podcast. I am here back at the 2024 NAM show, and it's my great privilege and pleasure to bring back a good friend of Scoring Notes and the president and CEO of NAM, John Malinsack. John, welcome back to Scoring Notes. It's so good to be here. Wow, what a different capacity than the past, my friend. Oh, it's so great. First of all, this is the first time that you and I have seen each other in person since you were appointed the CEO, president and CEO of NAM a little less than a year ago. So congratulations. Thank you so much. It is an honor and a dream come true. That's awesome. Well, you know, this is this show is the return to the first time that it's been a full, full four day exhibition uh, in four years. And it's at its customary time in January again. So I imagine it's both an opportunity to both recapture the excitement of the past, but also looking ahead to the future. Has that been the case? A hundred percent. You know, we knew, yeah. um, even when I took over and the staff knew and the board knew, you know, we're not going to fall back to like, oh, this is over. We'll go back and we have to go forward. Yeah. Yeah. And we wanted to come out at this show really, you know, first of all, we know what NAM means to our industry. We've done it for 123 years. So we wanted to make sure we offer the experiences that everyone comes to. But we also knew that we needed to take this time after a disruption in a leadership change, right? That and, and to say, where are we going the next 10 years and 20 years? So our commitment this year is thinking, you know, we think in decades. I know our members sometimes think in quarters <laughs> or year to year, right. but it's our job for them to think in decades. So we're bringing in influencers. We're you know funding major research on AI and future customer experience. And we're announcing new events over the summer. We came out like really swinging hard. Yeah on the future. And I think our industry is really, really taken it well. I think the future is in those creators, in the individuals. And I know for the first time, or maybe it was last year that it was introduced, that you can actually be an individual member of NAM. Is that right? Yes. You know, I think what's really interesting is we've always had these people at the NAM show, right. but it's always been like, hey, can I get a badge? Yeah, hey, you can need I get to a badge? swap a badge from a company. Yeah. And you look yeah. at the data, even from 2020, and it's like, well, who's at the NAM show? It's like exhibitors and attendees yeah. and retailers. Okay, but like, no, who's, but they all have this. So we've actually been super data driven. We redid the registration process. We made major updates before the show. So when you register, we collect a lot more tick boxes. Sorry. Yeah. But it also, we need to collect and understand who's here. So we did a, um, a segmentation exercise and identified seven segments and 21 personas of who's at the NAM show. And we made sure our registration process and our data identifies those because, you know, said it here, like we're not here as 62,000 people. We're here as 62 1,000 person communities. The notation community has very special nuanced needs. And the pro audio community and the lighting community and the instrument, they're all different, but yeah. they all depend on each other. Yeah. So that data is really powerful. And then through that, we realized, well, then how do these personas get to the NAM show? Well, they're working in the products industry. You're a luthier. Why can't you just come to the NAM show? <laughs> Oh, because you don't work for a member company. Because you, you know, you work. You know, you're a, you're a music producer. Oh, you're 1099. You don't work for a member company. Yeah. We're the gig economy, right? Yeah. So we said, no, no, no. If you're an individual working in music products, come as a member, so people know who you are, and we at NAM know who you are. And it's been really exciting. We've over 3,100 individual members now. That's great. Highly qualified people working in our industry. Yeah. And you can go to the NAM website and see a lot more of the benefits that that membership gets you beyond just attendance at the NAM show. It's 365 days a year and it really pays for itself many times over. So, you know, you, you mentioned the notation community and remind our listeners and readers that your roots in the music notation and education community. You have a <laughs> NAM CEO who can literally read music XML. Right? I've right. been yeah, deep I think there into was a um, and... pejorative term that you also used to refer to music XML, <laughs> but uh, we won't, you know, it's a family program, so we won't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it does rhyme very yeah. well. You can look back on scoring notes to find where you said that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but of course, you know, I, 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 I love that time. And I, yeah. you know, again, like, it's, it's the music and it's um you know we we see that even my background in how Leonard you know and, and yeah. with the the Muse score you know acquisition which I was of course working very closely with because these things don't take months they take years and so those conversations have been happening and even the evolution we were doing at note flight and how Leonard and with the the music reader and the digital advantage of how Leonard all those years through sheet music direct and then yeah. sheet music plus and getting that that notation viewer and converting things from music XML into note flight so we can power it on the web 
all that transformation and, and imagine there was a, a publisher who saw the foresight to say, we, you know, we're not going to be just books in a hundred years. Let's disrupt ourselves. And I'll give it to Hal Leonard. And I had the best role there because my job was to take notation so far ahead that a notation community then saw so much value right. that Hal Leonard is now part of Muse Group. No one ever would have thought that. Yeah. And I think it was, whoa. Yeah. But I think the whole industry went, huh? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it actually makes a lot of sense. It does. Yeah. And we know because they publish it, you know, that, that community, Ultimate Guitar, all that, there are 400 million individual humans that look at a piece of music every month. That's more than the population of the United States. Yeah. And so I take that to NAM and I say, you know, our industry is big. Yeah. The amount of music makers we create are big. And that all came from learning from the notation community. Yeah. And to that point, you know, those 400 million users, what would you say, you know, the other side of the coin is your role as an educator. What would you say to the next generation of scoring notes readers, uh, listeners, especially those who are so passionate about music notation and creation? And what advice would you give them and what the future is like in the field? Yeah, um, absolutely. That, that creating more music makers and having people play music is key. We can't have products. We can't have instruments. We can't innovate unless we have people that are educated on how to play. And I know technology is, is far lowering the bar to make sounds and get instant gratification. I get that. In a lot of ways, that's a good thing because more people, you know, lowering the barrier to entry means more people can enter. But I'd say what we need to do as a community right now, and we were doing this at Hal Leonard, and actually now I see the same thing in our industry as a whole. As technology lowers the barrier to entry, as AI, I can prompt, say, you know, sing me a song, you know, but um, as the barrier to entry gets lower, the gap between you know being an educated long-term consumer and lifespan learner gets higher so we need to make sure we're minding the gap right mind that gap just like stepping off the, the subway right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that gap is what concerns me a little bit we're getting way more people into music making than ever but how do we get them from here to here because traditionally we know once you're educated once you're musically literate you know, teach them to fish. They're good for life. Right. Let's figure out how do we get that gap. Yeah, that's a great mission and a great way to wrap up here because I know that the mission of NAM is really keen on this, and especially all the education events and roundtables and seminars that you've been convening and will continue con to convene uh, in the coming years. So I think that's a really great way to uh, to define what you're doing here and tie it all up. The last question I have for you, I know that the average uh, tenure of a NAM CEO is 25 years. So am I going to be here in 2049 having another conversation with you? You know, it's funny, too, because <laughs> I looked at that. I'm like, but it's tw I got to get 2050. I got to get the round <laughs> yeah, number. Right, so I yeah. think I got to go 26 years. Okay. Uh, the, I had I'll dinner with the past, the, the past two CEOs. We're all very friend. I had, had a lunch with Joe Lamont and Larry Lincoln, and yeah. they were joking. They're like, you know, this is not a tenure. This is a sentence. I've been sentenced <laughs> to 26 <laughs> years at NAM. I'm doing 26 years of hard time at NAM. <laughs> right. Well, we'll find a way to, to celebrate that and maybe code it in Music XML or some other, whatever the format is at that point. But John, I, I just got to tell you, I know you're a, such a passionate fellow in, in whatever you do. And I know the passion that you bring to this work. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. And congratulations on getting year one under your belt. Thank you. And you've been such a good friend and such a good supporter. You're one of the people that I met at NAM uh. that helped me uh. build my career. And I just appreciate you so much. For I, oh, thank you, John. That means a lot. Well, again, thanks. And I hope you uh, get a little rest and relaxation and look forward to what's coming next. I'll rest in 2050. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, everyone.